morning, Integrated Topic students. Today, Ms. Codner. Today's lesson was originally supposed to be for Tuesday and Wednesday, the 22nd and the 23rd. Since we had that lovely snow day, everything just got pushed back a day. So we're actually doing this for February 23rd and also for February 24th. So first things first, going to get our pencils out, calculators out. Um, we have one warm-up um, after I do a couple examples. And to get the homeworks ready for collection, which was that homework for inequalities, the graphing and the solving of inequalities. And first things first, we have three examples before we got involved in class, just to refresh your memories. So we're going to solve and graph the following equations. So for number one, we have 6x plus 8y is greater than or equal to 40. So as you recall, before I can put this lovely inequality into a graph, I need to solve it for y. So in order for me to solve for y, first things first, I need to get rid of this 6x. So that means I'm going to subtract 6x on both sides. And when I do that, my 6x's are going to cancel out, leaving me with 8y is greater than or equal to 40 minus 6x. So remember, I can't combine that 40 and that 6x because they are unlike terms. That 40 does not have an x, and that 6x is not just a plain old 6. Since I subtracted both sides, I do not change my inequality symbol. So that symbol stays the same. The only time it changes is when I'm multiplying or dividing by a negative number. So since we got to solve for y, we're going to go ahead and divide everything by 8. So when I do that, these 8s are going to cancel out, leaving me with 1y. And since I divide it by a positive 8, that means I have still a greater than or equal to symbol. 40 divided by 8 will give me 5 minus 6 eighths x. Now 6 eighths, just like anything else, can be reduced. And what they have is 2 in common. So that means I can basically divide the top portion and the bottom portion by that 2. And instead of a 6, my numerator is actually going to be a 3. And instead of an 8, my denominator is going to be 4. The reason why I keep that as a fraction, remember, that coefficient or the number that's in front of my x, that's going to be my slope. And slope is just a short way of saying rise over run, or another name for calling rate of change. If I change that fraction to a decimal, it's going to be really hard. It's possible, but it's going to be kind of hard for me to see where 0.75 is going to look like on the graph. So that's why we want to keep this as a fraction. So now, going over to the graph, where do I start? So this is almost in what's called slope-intercept form. So the number that does not have the x associated with it, that's going to be my starting point, a.k.a. my y-intercept. So that's where I start on the graph. I'm going to start at positive 5, and then I'm going to look at my slope next. So my slope is a negative 3 fourths. So I can say I want to go down 3, but I'm going to the right 4. Okay. So the slope is telling me what direction I need to move in order to create my next point. That y-intercept is where I start. So now, I need to look at my inequality. My inequality is greater than or equal to. So what kind of line am I going to draw? So in this case, I should draw a solid line. The reason why, because it's equal to. So now, I need to figure out which way I want to shade. So right now, I would say greater than, I would shade above this line. 
But what will be another way of me checking? If you recall from last class, we talked about we want to test with that point zero, zero. Meaning, I'm going to substitute a zero for y, which gives me y is greater than or equal to 5 minus 3 fourths times, and I'm going to substitute a zero for the x. So anything times zero, it's zero. So we don't have to worry about this. That's going to give me zero. So now 5 minus 0 is just 5. So I have 0 is greater than or equal to 5. Is that a true statement? No, it's not. If you think of the number line, 5 is definitely further to the right than 0. So since that is a false statement, I'm going to shade the side that does not contain my point 0, 0 which is going to be above the line. Okay? Or, remember I gave you that shortcut? If it's greater than, you're going to shade above. If it's less than, you're going to shade below. Okay? So first things first, we had to solve it for y. Then we had to plot our two points to create our line. We had to look at our inequality to figure out if we're going to have a solid or a dashed line. Then we had to figure out our shading. If it's greater than, we shade above. If it's less than, we shade below. Okay, example number two. Negative 3x plus 5y is less than or equal to 12. So we're going to solve this one again for y. So in order for me to do that, I need to add 3x on both sides. The reason why I'm adding my original is a negative 3. So then the x's will cancel out on my left side. So I'm left with 5y is less than or equal to 12 plus 3x. So solving for y, divide everything by 5. I like to show it by everything because it helps me to remember that I'm still dividing every single solitary term. So since I'm dividing by a positive 5, my sign and symbol is going to stay the same. 12 divided by 5 is 2.4 plus 3 fifths x. So 2.4. 2.4 is where I'm going to start, and 2.4 is roughly between 2 and 3, so I'm going to put a point there, and I'm going to go up 3, that's 1, that's 2, that's 3, and I'm going to go over to the right 5. So now, I have a less than or equal to, not because my slope is positive, I always have to look at my inequality to see what type of line I'm going to draw. So if it's equal to, I'm drawing a solid line. Let's see if I can turn that all the way out. So now I got to go back to my inequality again. It's less than. So which way should I shape? Should I shade above or should I shade below? If it's less than, I should shade below the line. But again, how can I check? Remember, we can test it with that point, 0, 0. So that means I'm going to have a 0 less than or equal to 2.4 plus 3 fifths times 0. And hopefully you see that anything that I put, anytime I put a 0 in for the x, this area is always going to give me a 0. So a shortcut would be, okay, let me put a 0 in for the y, 
and then I bring down just this component and just look at this statement right there that I put in the dotted. So now, 0 less than equal to 2.4, is that a true statement? Yes, it is. And since it is a true statement, you want to shade the side that contains that point zero, 0. Did we when we did our first assumption? Yes, we did. Okay. And lastly, y plus 1 is less than negative 2 times x minus 3. So first things first, we got to distribute the negative 2 to everything inside the parentheses. So then we have negative 2x plus 6, because it's a negative 2 times a negative 3. Everything else is coming on down. So we want to subtract 1 on both sides. Now we have y is less than negative 2x plus 5. Is this in my slope-intercept form? Yes, it is. So I'm starting at 5. Then I'm looking at the slope of negative 2. That means I'm going down 2 over 1. Now what type of line should I draw? Should be a dashed or a dotted line. Because it's just simply less than. So it's less than. So which way should I shade? We could assume that we're going to shade this bottom side. So let's test it. So we have 0 is less than 5. Because if I put a 0 in for this x, this whole section right here is going to be 0. 0 plus 5 is 5. Is 0 less than 5? Last time I checked, it is. So that means we're going to shade the side that contains that point zero, 0. Okay? So after we did these examples, gave them a practice paper, which is on the website, and then they also had the homework assignment, which was indicated um, in equality homework number 2. This time it gave you four graphs, and the students had to figure out the inequality, so we kind of had to think in reverse. And then it also gave us a word problem for us to solve for us to graph and to solve. All right? So again, if there's any questions, I am available. You can contact me via email, or you can come see me during Wildcat Hour. I'll be in my classroom on Tuesday through Thursday. Interim grades are due for us um, next Tuesday. So next class, we're actually going to have an assessment, which is going to be on the 25th and the 28th. And that will be close to the last, I think that will be, other than the homework assignment I'm going to give them for um, the weekend. That is going to be actually on the interim. Okay? So any questions, just come see me during Wildcat Hour or email when you can. Thanks.